All right, so today it is Foundation Friday. This is where we talk about foundation every single Friday on my channel, 6 p.m. Pacific time. We're talking about the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation, a new release from NARS. This actually isn't the first time I'm testing this. It's not a first impression review. I've tried this foundation twice before and both times were documented on camera. So I tried this in a first impression, like full face to first impressions. So I'll link that video in the eye and down below. And then I also tried it the second time in a recent vlog. So I'll link that one also in the eye and down below so you can see that. And that one was also fully in natural light and very up close. And that was my correct shade, different shade than what I tried in the first impressions video. So now coming at you the third time I'm trying it, I have some thoughts on the foundation. We're trying it in different ways than I have the past two times. And we're gonna be doing a full day wear test, shots and natural lighting today. So a little bit about this foundation. It retails for $40, but you actually get 1.5 fluid ounces of product, which is, a significant amount more than the standard one fluid ounce of product. So you get a ton of product in here. It has a squeeze tube bottle. So hopefully you'll be able to actually get that extra amount out of like the top of here. It's a pretty hard squeeze tube. So you might need to like cut, you know, the packaging to get it out at the end. No, I'm not there yet, so I can't say for sure. Comes in 34 shades. My shade is Mont Blanc, but I'm also going to be swatching for you the shade Yukon since I already opened this one and swatched it. So it's not a waste to, you know, swatch both of them for you. So Yukon is the shade Up, Light 2.5. I'll also include the shade that I tried in the other first impressions video since I already tried that one too. <laughs> and I'll swatch it against some other foundations in a minute. But it says it's a breakthrough in a matte foundation. <laughs> True color oxidation resistant, full natural looking coverage, comfortable 16 hour wear, anti-oxidation complex to prevent color shifting. So it's not supposed to oxidize or change color at all. Um, blue light damage, blah, blah, blah. Hydromat, it is supposed to keep the skin hydrated, has a hyaluronic acid in it, smooth mattified second skin look, transfer proof, oxidation resistant and shine proof, medium to full buildable coverage. On Sephora it says it's full coverage, natural soft matte finish, humidity proof, sweat proof. There's a lot of claims on there that are that sound pretty amazing. So we're gonna uh, test them today. Obviously we're not gonna test the humidity proof claim, but we're gonna get into all of that in the demo part of this video when I'm putting on everything. But I'm gonna insert swatches here of these two shades plus some of the other shades next to some other foundations. Here's some swatches. All right, so here's some swatches. My arm's a little bit extra red right now because I was just holding a hot pack, but um, here are swatches. <laughs> so the first two are the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I only did two because I actually could not find the darkest shade that I did in the first impressions video. But if you saw that video, you know it's nowhere even close to any of these shades. So it's not, you know, super useful as far as just shade comparisons anyways. But right here's the NARS Soft Matte Foundation in the shade Mont Blanc. Next over is 2.5 Yukon, so it's the next shade up from Mont Blanc. Here's Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover in the shade 1C1 Cool Bone. So this isn't the normal Estee Lauder, this is the Maximum Cover one. Here's Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Foundation in 102 Fair Porcelain. I wanted to do kind of like, you know, full coverage matte foundations just for comparison. Urban Decay Stay Naked in 20NN and L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear in 410. So if you enjoy Foundation Fridays and find them helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. Anytime you guys thumbs up a video, comment down below. It helps me out, so I really appreciate it. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Let's get into the rest of the video. Okay, so it is 7.54 in the morning when we are starting this. <laughs> starting this one out early. And I just realized I forgot to put earrings in, BRB. All right, so clearly I'm having some... Um, maskany again happening down here. Let me know if you guys want to see a, I think I'm two years post Accutane update, but I feel like now is kind of like an optimal time to do it just with the maskany happening and stuff. Let me know if, I don't know, you'd want to see that. I did a six month post Accutane update, but maybe it is time to do a two year. I think it's been two years. I don't know. I've got to calculate. Got to wake up. Got to pep it up. Okay. Ignore all the marks on my neck, people. I'm trying to cover it up with lines mane of hair today. I have a little bit more of a glow now because I just applied my Purito SPF because I forgot to do that. Let's see what else I forget to do in this video. Can't wait. The Purito SPF I link down below in every video, but that's the one I use under every single foundation. Doesn't alter it. So since this is the third time I'm applying this NARS foundation, you definitely need a good moisturizing base, whether it's your SPF, 
your moisturizer, whatever you use. The Purito one typically for me is moisturizing enough. I'm gonna do half my face with the brush. I'm using the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush and then half with my Haley's Beauty Sponge. So a couple things that I've learned from already trying this foundation. One, you need a small amount of this. A little bit goes a long way. You need to work in sections. It dries down very fast. So don't go in and try and apply this all over your face at one time, it's gonna be a nightmare because it dries down very quickly. So they're not kidding with this foundation. It is actually a very true matte, <laughs> extremely matte foundation, which I do enjoy. I actually really like a matte foundation, especially for fall and winter right now. Like I'm just enjoying the very matte look. It just looks very fall to me for some reason with like no highlighter. I just, I like that look. However, it can be tricky to achieve that look if you have skin that's on the drier side. So you can get it. There are foundations that work for my skin, but it's just kind of like, it's trickier to get. Let's get into putting it on my face and I'll talk more about how I'm going to get into applying it, wearing it today and like things that I've noticed with this one and what I like and don't like about it so far that I've tried it a couple times. I haven't worn it for a full day so far, but there are definitely a few things I've noticed like off the bat that I don't like about it, but I feel like there's potential with this one. So I'm, I'm kind of curious today to find a way to hopefully make it work. So hopefully we can do that. Cheers, coffee. Thank you, caffeine, for existing. Wow, you know, it just popped in my head. I'm working on a video for um, products that are discontinued that I loved, and this mug was discontinued, <laughs> and I wanted to put it in that video. Okay. The shade I used in the first impressions video was, like, totally off. People were wondering why I chose that shade. I didn't choose that shade. Those shades were sent to me in PR, so I was just working with what I had, and now I have the correct shade, which is Mont Blanc for my skin tone, so that was that. So as far as brush versus sponge with this one, so far I'm leaning towards sponge, but I am gonna try it today, like I said, with a brush, half face still, but use less product now that I know you need a tiny amount and just see how it goes with the brush. This is full coverage. It is a true full coverage foundation. So if you're someone who likes opaque full coverage, this is opaque full coverage, okay? So because I have a lot more to cover up on this side today, I'm gonna use the brush on this side because typically I get more coverage with the brush and I'm trying to cover up all this, folks. By the way, this one is not buildable. <laughs> so don't go in with two layers thinking if you miss something, you can add more. It'll just look super cakey and it does dry down. So you just wanna go in with a sufficient amount on the first layer, cover what you wanna, and that's it. Let's go in. So I used a tiny amount and uh, we're gonna cover what we're gonna cover. So things I don't like so far is that this one on me is pretty crazy. In this review, we're not gonna be, you know, using primer stuff typically. I just like to test the foundation and then afterwards in my foundation update videos or in the description box if I have time to test it more, which I have a feeling before this goes up, I won't, but in the update video, I will let you know or like I said, I'll pin a comment or something if I have time to test it more, but about how it goes with primer or you know, testing it in different ways with like setting spray and stuff. But this one seems to crease uh, pretty significantly and just kind of like settle into my lines. But I mean, look at how that covered with a small amount of product. So today, like I said, I'm using less product than I did in the first impressions video because I'm hoping that it'll crease less so I'm using less product and I'm still getting amazing coverage. I mean, that just fully covered all of that acne right there, all of the redness. I am thinking I might just bring this down to my neck today to cover some of that heat rash. The other thing is this foundation seems to look much better when I first put it on and then about an hour in, or even like a half hour in, it kind of just looks a bit more makeup-y and kind of like settles into my fine lines, like on my forehead and then around my mouth area. But the first time I wore it in the first impressions video, I did apply the CoverGirl Clean Fresh powder all over and it initially looked better. Like it really airbrushed everything out, made it look super smooth, but maybe that made the creasing 
look worse because I had more product on, so maybe today it'll look better. The second time I wore it in the vlog, I did not apply a powder. I was able to keep that one on for a few hours that day, and now that I'm thinking about it, it did look a little bit less creasy and less makeup y, so maybe today it'll go better without an all over powder. It does seem to oxidize about half a shade, which I noticed the second time I applied it in the vlog which is interesting because they specifically say that there's an antioxidation complex to help prevent color shifting. So that's like one of the things that they call out. So that's interesting. Maybe it's just on my skin, but I mean, it looks lighter when it initially goes on. It doesn't super bother me. I'd rather have it oxidize right away than happen throughout the day. Test, test. You guys don't know how many times I do that in every video. I literally cut it out about 35 times. I have a fear of my microphone turning off as I'm filming because it has happened so many times in the past where the battery just dies and then you keep filming and then you have to trash the whole video and you don't even know what it's taken to get this video up today. So the mic is not gonna be the killer of this video. Before I do the forehead, I am going to do the sponge on the other side and then decide what I wanna use for my forehead, whether we do a sponge or brush or both. Maybe we'll do a combo both. But let's go in with the sponge on the other side and you'll see the color difference when I go in. Yeah, so you can see there's about half shade difference there and it does look a bit more yellow too after oxidized. You do get a little bit more wiggle room with the sponge as far as it not drying down as quick, which is why I'm adding a little bit more product right now because it's adding a bit of moisture into the foundation. So I can do that if I were to do that with the brush. Like I said, it just dries down so quickly that you just can't do that. So I do think there is definitely a difference in coverage between the sponge and the brush side, especially considering I had so much more to cover on this side today than this side. I think I'm at about medium coverage, but high medium coverage on this side with a sponge. And then I'm at full coverage with the brush. So I think it just depends on the look you're going for. But even with the sponge, the finish still does look totally matte. So it's not going to affect the finish of the foundation at all. I don't think there's a huge difference though, just as far as how smooth the finish looks. Both the brush and sponge side, as far as just the texture on my skin and how the foundation's sitting, look nice and smooth at this point, like for a matte foundation on my skin. I'm just gonna kind of like go over it and see if there's any kind of difference. Yeah, I think you could go either way, just like depends on the coverage really. I did feel like though, when I applied it the second time, I used a sponge all over my face and I did still get full coverage. So maybe I just used more product than I just did right here. Cause I'm trying again to avoid the creasing and kind of use like less product today. I'm going to try and go down here with the brush and I guess we'll see how well this covers if you have any, you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that just covered super well. So you can see, I mean, full coverage for sure. I um, personally really enjoy that that just covered that because this is a situation that happens um, almost every day. So if I have a foundation that can cover that I am very happy about that. So thank you NARS. I appreciate that. I like that. For my forehead, what I'm thinking is use a brush, but use a tiny bit of product to hopefully avoid, you know, creasing and stuff and then just smooth it over with a sponge. Kind of my go-to move there for my forehead. A lot of products look really crappy right here, especially matte ones. So I'm going to really smooth it over with a sponge there and just use, like I said, tiny amount of product. I'm starting with like, very small amount of foundation. Oh my god, it just a little bit goes a long way. Okay, I'm gonna um, take my brush and just wipe off the excess on my hand here and then also wipe off uh, a lot that I just put on my forehead. We gotta go in with this bunch. This dries down so fast. Okay. This dries down so quickly that I'm just like focused on getting this on my face. <laughs> And I will talk to you guys. If you're someone who like doesn't like to work really fast with your foundation, I would say it might be worth just using a dampened sponge because it will add a little bit of that wiggle room for you and extra time. It's definitely a little bit less uh, of a fast process if you use a dampened sponge. And it does give you the flexibility if you, 
you know, miss a spot or want to add like a tiny bit more in a certain area, you can go back in with the dampened sponge versus if you uh, do that with a brush, it's a no. Okay, today's application, I would say I'm liking it the best so far out of any of the times I've applied it. So I think the key so far, I mean, we'll see, you know, in an hour, like I said, typically in the in past history, it's gone downhill in an hour or so, so we'll see. So far, it's looking the best. So I think the lighter amount of product plus the sponge, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I do think I like the sponge better with this one, especially on my forehead, it looks really nice with the sponge. And last time I applied it the second time, was with the sponge. So I think the sponge for me is the way to go with this one. I like that it gives you that extra time too. I am getting some settling around here, but not bad on my upper lip yet. It's not looking like amazing and plumping or anything right here, but it's not looking terrible for being a matte foundation right here. It's looking good on my forehead up here though, and does just look like a soft matte foundation. Let's look back on the claims again. Hydra matte, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say this is hydrating at all. I definitely don't feel like all three times I've, I've worn this, my face has felt hydrated at all. It's a fully matte foundation, and if you have dry skin, like you're not gonna feel hydrated. It is comfortable. I will say that I don't feel like it's like a thick, heavy feeling. Like I enjoy the way the foundation feels on my face, but I wouldn't call it like a hydrating matte foundation. Definitely not as lightweight as the Lawless Matte Foundation. This does feel like kind of medium level of thickness. It's not super thick, but I could see how if you use too much foundation, you could be feeling real thick and cakey. So I just key, key point here, use a little bit. It does say it has hyaluronic acid in it, so I'm sure that's why they're calling it a, you know, hydra matte foundation. The transfer proof claim we'll test throughout the day. Soft matte finish is true, humidity proof. I can't test, I live in Seattle. However, uh, Leanne says did a video on this foundation and she has a totally different skin type to me, but she tested it in like insane Texas humidity. So if you wanna check out her review, she said it was like fully humidity proof. Those are my current thoughts on it. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup, come back, check in, we'll do shots of natural lighting and I'm gonna wear it throughout the day and we'll do flash tests. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes back here, but right now it is 8.29. Okay, so it's now 9.10, but we're calling the check-in time 8.35 since that's when I finish up with my face. I uh, took a little waffle break because my stomach was growling, made a little blueberry ego because I'm five years old. And I was looking in the mirror, like in the rest of my place and in the bathroom and stuff, and it looks really good. Like this is the definitely the best this looks so far and the most I like it so far. Just looks very soft matte, looks very flattering and full coverage and for like a matte foundation on my skin so far. Fingers crossed it wears well throughout the day and, and looks better and less makeup y than it has the past two times. It doesn't look perfect. Like I definitely am still getting, you know, creasing and stuff around my mouth and it's looking like a little makeup y in certain areas around my mouth, but overall I do think it looks nice at this point. I'm gonna zoom out so you can get kind of like an overall picture of the look and the shade and everything. For the makeup on the rest of my face, I wanted to keep it pretty matte. I didn't use any shimmers or highlighter or anything. Like I said, I've just been feeling kind of like the all matte look for fall and stuff. But I retried the Lip Bar Palette. This is black owned brand. This is the Minute Finish Fresh, fa wait, Minute Finish Face Palette. Just use the blush and bronzer from this palette. And then for eyeshadow, I use the Sigma Untamed Palette that I've been loving. I just used this shade and this shade, just two of the matte shades. And then I retried the M Cosmetics Illustrated Black Liner. So we'll see how this holds up throughout the day. One thing I've noticed with this liquid liner is that if you have kind of like more watery eyes, it tends to kind of like bleed immediately down into your waterline. So that's one thing I don't love about it. But other than that, it is a brush tip. It's very black, easy to use. So I like that about it. For mascaras, Essence Lash Princess Volume with MAC Extended Play on the bottom. And then for lip liner, actually used up. <laughs> it's gonna be in an empties. I don't think I've had a lip liner in an empties in like years, but I was, I was shocked. This is a goner. So you'll see in this, I'll have an empties video coming in a few weeks, I think, but this is the Rimmel Exaggerate 32 Innocent liner. And then I used Artist Couture in the shade Angel Baby. This is a really nice uh, nude shade. And also on my waterline, I used this power pencil in the shade Beige from BH Cosmetics, which is a nice, just like light nude, kind of brighten things up. And I think that's everything 
for makeup. So let's go see what this looks like in natural lighting and we'll do a flash test. Check-in time is 8.35. Here we are in natural lighting. Yeah, it does look like makeup in certain parts like between my eyebrows. Let me zoom in. Not horrible, it's just like, you know, it looks a little bit makeup-y. Just right here. It looks like more of a matte foundation, which typically matte foundations, if you have more texture and dry skin, tend to just look more like makeup. There are a handful of matte foundations I've found that don't do that uh, on my skin, but it's just, they tend to more often than not look more makeup-y if you have my kind of skin. However, I still like the look of it, like just looking at my face, not, you know, super <laughs> up close, like in detail, just like overall, if I'm walking around outside, just like looking at my makeup, I I like how my face looks. I like the matteness and I think it looks nice right now. Now we'll see, you know, in a few hours if the things that I'm noticing right now get any worse, but it's looking overall pretty good. And I do think that if I sprayed a setting spray, by the way, the second time I applied it, I did spray a setting spray over top. I used the e.l.f. A new setting spray in the like mint green bottle, but I do think if I used a setting spray like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus that doesn't alter the finish of the foundation, so if I still wanted to keep the matte finish but just kind of like melt everything together, that could probably help out some of just like the areas that are looking a little bit more cakey. It is supposed to be transfer proof, so typically I like to do those tests at the end of the day just so in case it's not transfer proof, I'm not like totally blowing the whole wear test right at the beginning. So I will test that towards the end of the day. So I'm gonna go into the dark spot, do a flash test, see how it looks in flash. Okay, I do feel like I look, oops, not in frame, didn't even look, just started talking. I do feel like I look, uh, a little ghostly. I don't know, maybe it's my eyes just being blinded after that flash, but what do you guys think? I do feel like there's a little bit of a white cast. The uh, SPF I use underneath my foundation doesn't affect it at all, and I only have powder underneath my eyes, which also doesn't affect it. It's the CoverGirl powder. It doesn't look like awful. I don't know, what do you guys think? But I will see you back here in a few hours. Okay, so it's now exactly one o'clock. Oh my God. It just started raining. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. We're in the middle of the um, fire, like the smoke, and it just started raining, like literally right this second. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, what did I say? It's one o'clock, so it's been on for four and a half hours. It's looking pretty much exactly the same. I'm getting a tiny bit of creasing right here, but not bad. Uh, it's definitely looking much better than both times I've worn it in the past so far. It's looking um, pretty good overall. Like, I still like how it looks. I do think the creasing has gotten slightly worse. You can see it kind of going up a little bit more right here. Not too bad on this side. And not too bad on my upper lip, considering some foundations get real creasy right on my upper lip. I'm starting to look, like, a little bit dewy on my forehead, which is weird. At first I was thinking maybe it's just the bronzer but it's definitely like all the way across my forehead. Huh. And I didn't notice that happening the first couple times I wore this and I did use the Purido sunscreen the second time I put this on. So it's not the Purido. I like it, like I think it looks nice. I overall really like how it looks right now. I will see you guys at the next check-in. Hopefully it stays raining. We need the smoke to clear out. All right, guys, so it's now 5.47, so the foundation's been on for about nine hours. We're gonna do a little transfer test. Um, I'm gonna take my white shirt, and actually, well, first let me look at the foundation. Okay, let's look. It's actually looking really good. Like, this is definitely the best it's looked all day. I was laying down, but I didn't lay on my side. I guess I could have. I was just trying to avoid it for the foundation, but since it is supposed to be transfer proof, maybe I could have, we'll find out. But definitely the way I applied it today was for sure the best out of any application, like the past two times I've applied it. The only thing I'm noticing is that my forehead definitely looks like quite dewy, which is weird because this is supposed to be shine controlling, you know, it's like a super matte foundation. I'm trying to think what I did this morning, like maybe it was a different skincare item I used or something. I did use the Bento Tea Tree um, like cleansing thing. I, maybe it was that, but I kind of like it. I mean, I like a little bit of a glow and it just kind of looks like a satin finish. It's not like oily looking or anything. 
I'm not getting creasing on my upper lip, which is good. Overall, I think it looks just good. It's like held up really well throughout the day for just a soft matte foundation. For a matte foundation on my skin and full coverage, I think it looks, you know, pretty good. Like it, like I said, it does look makeup-y in certain parts. It doesn't look the most skin-like. It definitely looks like a full coverage matte foundation. But if that's what you like, if that's what you're going for, I like this one. I like how it's held up. Let's do the white shirt test. So I have one right here. We're gonna do this. Nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing. Let's do my forehead because my forehead, like I said, it's kind of oily looking or something. Mm, nothing. It's so dark in here. I can't even see it. I feel like I can see more in the viewfinder. Uh, looks like I have a little bit on the shirt actually. Yeah, there's a little bit right there, I think. Seems to be coming off. Let me try this side. Just keep pressing. Really getting that hug in, you know? Yeah, it is transferring a little bit. Let's do the mask. We'll see if it comes off on my nose or if just on my nose, it um like rubs off like on my actual nose. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how long I should like keep this on for. By the way, the rain stopped and um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away today, which is very sad, very sad. Um, thank you, Ruth, for all of your work. Oh man, what a freaking year, dude. Okay, let's take this off. Okay, it's hard to tell on this mask. I don't have a white mask. I feel like usually you can kind of more tell on your face if it's rubbed off. I see a little tiny bit. Nothing like super noticeable. Right now I'm enjoying this one. I like how it looks for this particular look. I definitely wouldn't say it matches up with some of their claims as far as just like skin-like and hydrating. It definitely doesn't feel like either of those things to me, but I do like it. I think it looks good. What do you guys think? It's held up really well throughout the day. And now that I know the trick to apply this one, sponge and a little bit of product and just working quickly, I do think I like this one for kind of more just matte, full coverage foundations. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's Foundation Friday. If you did, you can give this video a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.